Okay, we're on day one of this Roswell bathroom. Um, the floor here is kind of odd. It has uh, parquet flooring, but it's not real parquet flooring. It's just sticky stuff. And they did a really good job of putting it down because um, this house is about 10, 11, 12 years old, and there's not too many gaps. Uh, the gaps form with uh, sticky stuff when um, this tile is not buttered up against each other and it gets kind of hot and that glue kind of disadheres and you know get a separation. Um, so this was put on relatively good but it's still crap and I'm going to be tiling this floor eventually and rather than take all this sticky stuff off there's three quarter ply up under here as a subfloor. So I'm just going to nail on my uh, dur rock, quarter inch dur rock, straight onto this. Since I put about 50, 60 nails in each piece anyway, it'll be irrelevant and it'll save a lot of time and energy trying to take all this stuff off the floor. Um, and this goes around into the walk in closet and the toilet closet area. And um, the tub, um, we're not going to do anything with the tub. Uh, they can find a new tub fixture, then we'll change that out. Um, they might go with a tile, you know, going up a, like the backsplash. I usually like to take it up to the window sill. The problem with this bathroom is they put the window up so high that there's a good foot, maybe 18 inches from top to bottom. Um, so to try and get a full tile in there and then some type of, you know, um, bull nose or cap or something is going to be a little difficult. And I think it would look stupid anyway. It's already got a built-in backsplash. Um, maybe an 8-inch tile with some type of rope or something on top of it, if anything. But I doubt that it, I Personally, I wouldn't do anything except take this tub out and get a jacuzzi tub that's got a real face on it so I could tile the face. But, you know, I'm just kind of following the lead what the customer wants. So that's kind of where we're at with that. The shower, um, it has this funky thing going, a beam going across the top and of course it's the full eight foot wall over here. Um, they don't want that anymore, they want a knee wall. Um, but the issue with the knee wall, they're usually four foot high, which is about here. And your window usually wants to line up at the bottom of the window sill with the knee wall. And in this case, that's not going to happen. So I believe it's three foot from floor to the window sill, so we're going to make this knee wall at three foot, which is a little bit low, but it's okay. They're going to put a panel of glass that's going to go right here along with their new glass door. So um, it'll just be a larger panel of glass instead of a three foot panel. It'll probably be a four foot just to get up to that six foot, six and a half foot height or so. Um, so that wall will be gone um, and just bring it down to the three foot level as well, that being will be gone. This is a plastic shower. I know they're fiberglass, but I like to call them plastic because that's how much of respect I have for them. Um, none uh, whatsoever for a lot of different reasons. Um, this one isn't too bad, but there is some staining on the floor that you really can't see with the camera. Um, that staining will never go away if you spill wine or, or anything like that bleach um, on this fiberglass, then it's pretty much you know, a done deal, um, as well as cracking. I've seen these things that are cracked before, and people put beads of caulking and stuff like that, but, you know, it's just um, not my forte. Uh, I've put one or two in in my life, but not recently, and I'm usually taking them out rather than putting them in. So we're going to cut this thing in half and get this thing out of here. We're going to change out the shower fixture. Um, we're going to extend this extra 12, 13 inches out so the curb will eventually follow this wall all the way down to this knee wall here. Um, so they're going to get probably about another two square feet, which doesn't seem like a lot until you're actually in there. So mm, maybe three square feet. Um, this is from left to right, about three foot and then about a foot deep. Um, so they'll get that and then of course this is kind of thick and we're going to have a tile to the wall so we got about an inch and a half inch and a quarter there same on the other side so we'll get a little bit more room in here um, what I would like to have done had it been me this walk-in closet goes back pretty far and then it goes actually in this is the back of the walk-in closet what I would have liked to have done is probably take out another foot or maybe 
15 inches of that closet and wall it off in the back and make that the depth of the closet and add that extra foot and a half or so um, to the length of the shower that would have been much nicer but um, again just following the customer's lead so uh, this tear out is relatively simple I'll just be cutting this out taking the shower door out uh, replumbing the drain getting that back over center uh, put a new p-trap in put a new shower fixture in um, put my wall board up red guard it and tile we're going to actually tile up to that crease there because it's a vaulted ceiling that goes on an angle so we're going to go up to that crease with the tile and follow this around get rid of uh, no we're not going to get rid of that that's actually door molding which is funny if you look at this door molding here it's the same stuff they put up here instead of crown molding so it's kind of cheesy but we're going to take our tile straight up to the bottom of that and um, we're going to have a bullnose or something going straight up here so it'll look like a much larger shower it'll feel more airy and everything when I get done uh, the vanity we're going to take the vanity out um, I think they have a freestanding one that they're going to purchase but we're going to take the vanity out there is a little strange thing going on in Oddity they actually have an outlet inside the vanity and that's from new build that wasn't you know a retrofit thing so that's kind of odd they've never been able to use that outlet although it is live so um, we're going to put that outlet right here with the mirror gone they may or may not put another mirror back with a hole cut out for that outlet because there's only one over here um, so they'll have a secondary one which will be between the two sinks um, if they're not able to do that or they decide they don't want to do it with the mirror then I'll still put it on the wall right here and um, it'll be more practical than being inside there so that's kind of uh, what's going on here there's not a whole lot to it other than the floor and the shower which is what I do all the time um, this is kind of iffy I don't know how much change there's going to be on the last video but the shower definitely will be profound um, from before and after so I'm going to get started and we'll see you later alright we're finished with this bathroom here as you remember there was that um, what do you call it that self sticking parquet stuff flooring so what we did is um, put some dirt rock on top of all that and everything and uh, nailed it down and you know put this tile on this is uh, I think 20, 20 by 12 tile they want it staggered um, and a nice cool vanity the same way the ton I mean the homeowner actually brought it up and about killed both of us um, but it's all inclusive the top came with the bottom it's glued down and everything so I'm going to be back later on at some point to uh, plumb in those sinks you recall there was a mirror here change the light fixture the mirror got taken off there was um, an outlet inside the old vanity that I moved up to there um, so that will become encompassed in the mirror and there will be a mirror plate on there glass company will take care of that my friend Ron did the wall painting it was battleship gray and now it's um, brown uh, so they wanted a backsplash on the tub they use the same type of tile except the 12 by 12 had to cut those down I think it's 9 or something did the little piece in the middle there and put the bull nose on it uh, came all the way around if you recall this shower actually was um, plastic or a fiberglass shower that had a wall that went up there and then a little archway that went across I don't know what that was for they didn't want that anymore they wanted a knee wall so I built them a knee wall um, of course you know it's part of the tub change out the faucet as well tub faucet uh, and uh, built them a real shower, a real tiled shower. With uh, they were lucky they found the same type of tile in two by two, so I was able to put that on the floor, put a new drain in, and all that stuff. There's my niche. Um, this is typical of what I do uh, with the framing, with using the bull uh, nose going around, do the framing, all symmetrical and everything, so the cuts are all even. What I wasn't able to do normally, I do a diagonal tile right in the middle, as I do with all my my niches that I build and I normally will put some of this tile like a 4x4 cut a piece of this tile in the center well 
this is porcelain tile and, and I've never really had an issue cutting porcelain tile doing a back cut to put the 4x4 in the center but in this case this tile would not cooperate um, I tried four different pieces of this tile to cut a 4x4 back cut and each piece broke on me so I quit while I was ahead and they didn't get the center piece so that's kind of a drag but there you go got the new shower fixture I'm not crazy about the double head um, I mean I like the color and all that stuff I just don't like the whole thing but um, anyway we took it all the way up to that fake door trim stuff that they have so they got a much larger shower they got what they wanted as far as the knee wall and openness and airiness that they have now um, the glass company is going to come in um, put a uh, what do you call it um, piece here on the knee wall and then the frameless door is going to go here I think it's a $1300 job for the frameless um, to go up uh, somewhere about that height on the panel and then the same height on the glass here with the two things holding it on over there and um, of course I put in the baseboard and quarter round which I don't normally do but I did it for this guy it paid me a little bit extra and there's a toilet area the floor was uneven so you can't tell it anymore but the floor used to slope upward this way and since I follow my tile and not the floor and I start out always over here at the entrance it was kind of thin, it got thicker, the mortar did that thicker, thicker, it was probably about that thickness over here which matched up to over here so by the time I got up here which is the highest point my thin set was very, very small um, so it worked out really well and um, that's it, we're done with this job this was seven days eight days, seven or eight days in and out from tear out to uh, finished product and uh, on to the next one.